Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Katie and today, as well as the Inktober stuff, I'm doing the favourite insect art challenge which has been set by Dina Tollefson. I'll be leaving a link to her channel in the description so please, please go and check her channel out. I really like her daubism style with the spoons but it's not just that she has loads of handy art tips to provide some of which I've benefited from as well and her videos are just lovely to watch so please go and check them out and I think it's brilliant how she sets these challenges and brings this little art community together I think it's great and be sure to check out her playlist once everyone's submitted as well Anyway, let's get on with talking about what's going in front of us, shall we? So, one of my favourite insects is the bumblebee. And just like the day one prompt for Inktober, I'd already got one of these already done, which was great. I'd planned on doing a video exploring these sparkly papers a little bit more, but I did want to do a bumblebee because I really like them. I don't know why, I just think they're really cute. I often rescue them if I see them on the floor. I've been known to try and spoon feed them sugary water and then place them inside flowers just so they've got somewhere safe to stay. And Yeah, I'm a sucker for a bumblebee. I mean, I don't want to get stung by one, but I certainly, certainly wouldn't hurt one. But saying that, I do quite like insects in general. Maybe not handling them so much, but I think they're fascinating creatures, aren't they? And they're so diverse. So to begin with on this painting, I did the background using the Windsor & Newton Black Indian ink, and that is perfect. It still shows all them gorgeous sparkles from the paper and it's permanent as well which is really handy because I do add other colours on here and I don't want any of that colour bleeding into the vibrant tones I'm going to be adding. I already like the contrast just by adding that black background has added to the picture but towards the end it looks really good with all of the colours. I'm using a brush watercolour pen which I got in the first ever Upcrate box last year, they're still going strong and diluted it with a paintbrush and some clean water just to make them edges a little bit softer and build up on the areas of tone and then for those gorgeous bumblebee colours I've went in there with Faber-Castell watercolour pen, a Karen watercolour marker and I also used the Marabou watercolour aqua inks that I got in the June smart box because I think they are fantastic and obviously I'm using the different colours which are appropriate for our bumblebee friend here and they are absolutely perfect for building up colour and texture and I've got a nice control over it as well I've gotten to quite like using these mediums again. I have used them before and they've featured a few times on my channel anyway, but I really appreciate that level of control I've got on how much colour I can apply and if I get to it in time, I can lift it off pretty easily as well. I also like that I'm able to use masking fluid with these as I would with a watercolour. I do have to be a little bit careful when using the pens actually over the masking fluid. The fibre tips you do have to be very careful that you don't lift the dry fluid underneath. The brushes are a little bit more forgiving though. Now it's time to start working on the bumblebee's infamous stripes and I didn't want to go in there with a straight up black ink. I didn't think it would look right and I know I can achieve the level of tone that I want. Because they're water-based pens I know they'll build up darker and darker than perhaps an alcohol-based one would but that's okay, I'm, it's quite within the realms of my control so it's not a problem. And as you can see on screen it looks dark enough without having to include the black and another good reason for this is I think it would completely mess with the contrast of the piece I think a lot of the bumblebee would go missing and I'd have to undo a lot of all of that by going around the whole thing in a white gel marker pen and I haven't got a problem with that but I didn't really want it to have that sticker effect on here it just it just didn't seem right for the style that I was going with 
Now, a previous version of me would have cringed at blending colours directly with the brush pens, but I, I have moved on from that and I have realised that it's not going to wreck my pen, especially with the brush fibre ones. Not a problem at all. And that adds a really nice transition between the darker areas and the lighter areas without it being too harsh and it just enables me to sort of add that fuzzy bumblebee look without it being too uniform I guess. Now I'll always love watercolours and I think that is possibly I'm not committing 100% but it is one of my favourite materials to use. However when it comes to using a medium on this glittery watercolour paper the transparency of the ink really works in its favour and it just means that any semi-opaque well that there's just no semi-opaque with this really and all of that sparkly goodness is going to show through. Just out of curiosity, have any of you guys tried the glittery watercolour paper yet? I do think it's quite a new thing, it was pretty new to me when I saw it and I couldn't wait to share it with you but I'm just curious to know, did any of you guys try it? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear what your thoughts were on it too. Now just to refine some of the edges and make our bumblebee a little bit fluffier and obviously add some of the veins to the wings, I used a black liner pen and again not going over the top with it, I don't want it to sort of vanish into the background and I just delicately add those details on there, I just want it to be subtle that's all. I think even if I'd used my rigger brush and the Indian ink it would have been too thick for it so I'm, I'm quite glad with my decision. And we're just sort of making the finishing touches here, obviously it's time to add the eye and again I didn't want to use a neat black and although I know the eyes are very dark I thought just by mixing those watercolour pens together I would achieve the right hue and it'd still stand out without anything being lost. And the signature's on the masking tape's coming off and we are all done. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making the picture for it. I just want to say a massive thank you to Dina for setting these fabulous challenges and keeping us all motivated. It's great and I love it. Be sure to check out her channel. And if you're new to my channel, why not hit subscribe? There's lots going on with Inktober at the moment and there should be a couple of videos on screen mentioning it right now, so why not click one? Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.